Hi everyone, welcome back to the 3D Light tutorials. So uh, this is tutorial number three and we we're going to speak about uh, polygons to subdivision surface at render time. So let's open our Maya scene and uh, it features of uh, two polygonal uh, dog heads and uh, we've seen before we can just create a render pass and just render. So basically this is a low polygon model. Now, okay, of course we could uh, um, smooth the uh, normals, so like doing, um, where is it? A soften edge and re-render this in eye display. But this is not, not really changing anything I mean, we are just interpolating the normals, but the polygonal edge stays there and the quality of the surface kind of sucks. So, let's go back here. We want to solve this problem and uh, the cool thing is that in 3D Light you can render any polygonal mesh made of uh, uh, quads and triangles at the same time. So not only or either only quads or only triangles, but any topology made of any uh, um, possibility of combination of quads and triangles and we can turn it into a subdivision surface at render time in no time actually. So we can create uh, and can introduce you to a new piece of the UI, the attributes node manager. We create this and we attach some special attributes to the polygonal dog that we want to turn into a subdivision. You can see that this, so the logic is we add special attributes. So we, we know that this is uh, geometry, so we will need uh, the attribute type is geometry, but we can also do it for lights. In another example, we will show it. And uh, uh, we just create this. The default name is the light geo attributes. And uh, um, we just create and attach it. So now we attach to this attribute node to the uh, dog here. If you go to the outliner, you will see the delight geo attributes node here, and as a child, the output clot, which is the name of this mesh here. So let's rename this with a meaningful name, so poly2sds, which is what we want to do. And double click on it, we will have the parameters here. What we want to do is going into the geometry section on the polygon section, subsection, and uh, say, please render these polygonals uh, mesh as a sub D. This is automatic, we have some other options you should check on the manual, and this is totally enough, you don't have to struggle with the um, uh, approximation settings or any of these annoying thing. This just works as it's supposed to. So if we go again and render the delight render pass, you will see the difference in quality is kind of astonishing. So definitely um, going into sub D's really creates a lot of details. Just look at the around the eye or around the nose here. So SD, SDS are really answer here. So we are pretty happy about this. Now we are thinking about adding some displacement to it. No problem. So uh, at this point we don't need this as a reference anymore so we can hide it and focus on our friend here. So, uh, we want to add some displacement, no problem. Again, um, in 3D Light, the, there is one thing to take care of when you do displacement on um, uh, objects. You have to tune the displacement uh, bound. You, this is basically the maximum amount of displacement you want to set. We, not, most of the time you can leave it at one and it should be fine. It, it should be higher than a little bit higher than the maximum displacement. Now how do you know that? Well, basically you need, depends on what, which kind of displacement you're plugging into your object. So up to now we don't, we still didn't set. So let's check here and we, I have a special network which I created before that handles um, very well displacement. Let me focus on it. So it's basically three volume noise textures, one, two, three, which are plugged one into each other at different uh, uh, ranges. So this is the alpha offset, for example. This is the alpha gain, and this is uh, uh, 
the alpha value of this text. So a remap uh, node is used with this kind of uh, value remapped, and we are passing this as a displacement network. Then we have a ramp shader that defines some cool colors. Basically, this will be you can imagine the resulting displacements as the sum of this. So we have a very smooth variation here, a bigger variation, and a kind of noisy look. They are all layered together, basically. So if we go here and apply our new displacement shader, so our shader in general, to, to the dog head, and render, uh, we will have displacement. As um, I know that my values don't go over one because I know the values I've set in this uh, in this texture network. That's why I'm leaving the um, displacement bound set to one, and the space is a shader space. So this is fine. We just have to render it. And you will see how fast is displacement and how look it is, how nice the look of it, it is. This is really astonishing, the amount of quality 3D Life is able to generate so quickly. You can see the really incredible detail on the surface. And not only, we can also go much near. So if I go at this distance and re-render, we will see better quality again, because as I said, the network creates some smooth variations, some more big variations, which are these lines here, and then it starts generating this more detail at the surface level. So uh, you can see, more detail is revealed, and you can zoom it into animating, basically. Let's zoom again into the dog here, for example here, and see again what comes out of it. So now you see the third uh, at high noise uh, uh, texture I was using, revealing, which it, it was kind of lost here, you, you don't see too much the detail until you go near. This is how it's supposed to work, it's really beautiful uh, displacement quality. Now that you are astonished with displacement, I was wondering to add motion blur. So currently there's no motion blur, but there is an animation, if you play it, Basically, I've created a, a cloth. This this head is made of cloth, not cloth just, and but and cloth. The new amazing technology added in my 85. So I want to have this kind of frame here. There you go, with my displacement, of course, and my SDS, and I want to motion blur it. Should be no problem. So first, I'll I'll do it without motion blur. I'll re-render again. The ball is hidden actually. So the mesh is deforming and everything runs totally fine. And now I want to motion blur it. Nothing more simple. I just duplicate my render pass so you know I can always switch back to no motion blur one. Select the render pass two and I call it final mo blur and go to the motion blur parameter here and say yes I want to have a uh, deformation blur and even transformation blur and uh, um, that's it I just okay of course when you when you're using motion blur you should uh, increment your quality settings in the pixel samples to 66 for example this is still going to be ultra fast and if I click on the render button we will see evaluation around the frame 26 and then motion blur look at here there you go and now motion blur as you can see, there is no difference in the adding or not adding 3D motion blur, and the parts which are moving fast, so the head of the dog is uh, falling fast because of the impact of the sphere, yeah. is motion blurred, while here, since it still has to move, it's, it's not blurred as it's supposed to be. A very important thing, since I'm speaking of motion blur, is that you should know, is that uh, if you can see the 3D light settings here, uh, you are actually using full motion blur now, I'm sorry I lost it, uh, yes, motion blur here, so shutter efficiency is set to 1-1, one, one. 
Uh, but you, there is another parameter about shutter which I want to mention. It's not really related to 3D light, but to any vendor. And uh, just the Maya guys decided to put here this important parameter. In my opinion, it's a wrong choice. And uh, uh, the shutter angle here is a bit lost, and many people don't know about it. But you could do like a full frame motion blur by setting 360 here, although the standard is 180. Uh, we will just exaggerate the motion blur effect and set it to 360 and re render this. There you go. Now we have more motion blur because we are doing full frame, uh, um, full shutter opening. You can see we have subdivision surfaces and uh, displacement and 3D motion blur rendered in a GIF with really high quality. And the other channel, of course, shows the detail. So this is a 360 and 144. Excellent. So we are pretty happy about it. And uh, as for this tutorial, we are fine. We will see each other in the next one. So take care and bye bye.